¿Qué tal? Buenas tardes a todos. Aquí estamos en Viva las Tardes con Elaine, pero esta vez es Claudia. Quiero agradecerles a todos por su sintonía y, por supuesto, Elaine, nuestra querida Elaine, les deja eh, su cariño y sus respetos, pero hoy no pudo estar con ustedes porque tenía otras actividades también muy importantes que requerían su asistencia. Por eso me ha dado a mí el, la, la oportunidad preciosa de poder eh, tener hoy día a un precioso invitado que tenemos desde Israel y por supuesto él eh, maneja el idioma inglés, así que vamos a estar haciendo esta entrevista en inglés. Así que, welcome Dan. Thank you very much for having me. It's eh, an honor to be here. Thank you so much for let us have you here in our studio, in our radio station, uh, OVM Radio, give you the welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, we hope we have a good time today, uh, today together and let us know all about Israel. Great, yeah. <laughs> I, I love to share uh, Israel. I think it's a, it's a wonderful place. Uh, it's a holy land. And it's such an important place for um, uh, Christians to come and to visit. That I would love to share it with everybody. Of course. Uh, well, Christian people, we have actually the, the, the curious uh, about all the places that our Savior was walking and living and uh, have the, the time with the disciples and many, many details that sure. Scripture show us, right? Absolutely. It it's really is when you go to a, a pilgrimage in Israel, you go and you walk in the footsteps of, of Jesus and, and you... you The Bible becomes alive. You really see the places from the moment uh, Jesus was born in Bethlehem and all the way to the moment he was risen uh, in Jerusalem. Um, and, and you can walk and see all the places and all the events that happened uh, in his life, um, which is spiritually so emotional and so beautiful. It changes people. I have seen people who come for a visit to Israel, um, they, they, when they leave, they're totally different people. They, they feel totally different, uh, much better uh, about themselves, about the world. Uh, which is wonderful. The, you can see the Word of God make the changes in the people then. Absolutely. You can really say that, that it's like the hands of God that created the change in the people. Well, and also we have the chance to see all the cultures about Israel, right? Absolutely. Beyond uh, the Christian history, uh, first and foremost, the Bible comes alive. And um, you can see all the places uh, where the stories of the Bible, the Old Testament, actually happen. Mm -hmm. From Abraham to Moses to King David and beyond. And, and you can really see the places. Archaeology really proved um, that things happen in those places. They found all kinds of archaeological um, proof, proof for the for the biblical stories. And beyond that, you can obviously <clears throat> experience the modern part of Israel, the, the culture, um, where it's, it's a mixture of very old, ancient biblical culture, modern Jewish culture, as well as everything between, which is the, the Middle Eastern and the Christian culture that all come together. And you can see it in the architecture, in the food, in the museums, everywhere. Okay. And about the people that already took the, the tour and, and worked with you, what was the, the highlight in the Holy Land? I think the highlight can be really uh, described by uh, a pilgrim that once told me that... Um, Until he came to the Holy Land, he read the Bible uh, many times, and it was all black and white, you know, the letters. He imagined things, and it was like an old black and white picture. After being in Israel, it suddenly became not only colorful, not black and white anymore, but in 3D. <laughs> and I think that describes really the highlights of everybody who comes to Israel. Things that you imagined all your life and you looked at it and you read about suddenly become real. And I can't even describe the emotion. I've been to Jerusalem hundreds, if not thousands of times. I 
you know, go up very often. But every time I go up that road and I start seeing the buildings in Jerusalem, my heart stops for a moment. It's, it's just that feeling of holiness, of kind of undescribable, uh, uh, unique feeling. And how Israel keep, you know, because we is a thousand years already from all the history that we have uh, from the Bible and all the, how Israel take care? Because we know it is not only uh, that part of uh, Israel, is uh, the new Israel as a, as a, uh, as a country, but uh, how they keep it, how, because there's a lot of people going there, especially for, the, for those uh, places. Um, um, Israel has, it's one of the leading countries in the world in preservation of not only archaeology and nature, but also cultural heritage. Uh, apart from the fact that there are quite a few UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Israel, many of them are actually religious, um, but the, the Israeli authorities make a point to preserve religious art to, to, and preserve religious sites. Um, it's a country where anybody can uh, practice any religion they want. Uh, and uh, the Muslims also have a very um, holy sites in Israel and obviously the Jewish faith. So everything is combined and respected toward each other. And it's actually wonderful to see how all huh. the religions actually combine together and now everything is preserved. Um, we at, at, at Israel Experts and at uh, Faith and Heritage Tours specialize in combining these tours and, and providing the people who come to Israel with such the experience. Yeah, because it's not only for us as a Christians, but I think as a Christian too, we need more uh, experience, more about the other cultures, uh, the other uh, uh, um, ways to see the, the, the faith. Because it's, that's the way that you can compare later how we, uh, the the veracity of our uh, the word of God, right? Absolutely. Uh, um, when you come to the Holy Land as a Christian pilgrim, it's very very important to understand the Judeo-Christian history. Mm -hmm. That really uh, modern Judaism and modern Christianity came from ancient Judaism. That's how they d evolved and developed, and what brought to that uh, um, um, evolvement and, and how it became actually what we have today. Uh, again, um, Faith and Heritage Tours, we, we have guides who specialize not only in the Bible. They are very, very knowledgeable about the Old Testament and the New Testament, but they're also very knowledgeable about the history. Mm -hmm. And they can provide that background for people to understand why we're here today. That's Which a, makes it a, a much more powerful uh, and experience. The, and the uh, experience and, uh, and the faith, I and believe. The, for the it. faith, yes. yes. Uh, what condition are waiting in the pilgrims as far as the service hotels that uh, you mentioned now, the, the, your company? Um, Israel is a modern country. Um, really, you can compare it to, to the United States as far mm -hmm. as services. Uh, a lot of people who land in, at Tel Aviv airport, they amazed how the terminal is totally modern. And when they go on the bus and arrive in Tel Aviv, they're amazed by the um, tall buildings. You know, the, we, we have skyscrapers, 60, 70, 80 floors high. Wow. Uh, not one, but many. Um, and even when you go to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which is an ancient city, you have modern neighborhoods. Um, so having said that, um, Faith and Heritage Tours, we really take all that Israel has to offer and custom design it to the group. So the services are first rate. Uh, as far as hotels, you can go from the super deluxe hotels for international deluxe chains, all the way to some pilgrims want like more modest places, um, four stars, three and a half stars, something like the Holiday Inn yeah. type of hotels, which are wonderful in Israel. The buses are all modern. They have Wi-Fi on them. Uh, our guides are, I think, they're best in the world. I, <laughs> I really love to say that because the guides in Israel are, are to be a guide, you need to, to study for two years and, and have um, 
a government uh, a class and and we employ the best um, so we give you really the best services uh, and faith and heritage tours we're proud that we really custom design every trip to the group so sometime a pastor or or a clergy come and they have special oh, needs mm -hmm. and the group has special needs so we custom design everything it's not something that you go and you have to do because we told you mm -hmm. we work together to make sure that it's a success the uh, the idea then is when a pastor or a leader has you know maybe going just to the mountain sign and see what all about over there and how the details that we can we can see that's the way you're talking about that the exactly. specific that you work with the people absolutely um, some tour leaders pastors want to go for I give you an example and mm -hmm. they uh, it's very important for them to to have a, a lunch on the Sea of Galilee um, basically eating uh, St. Peter's fish mm -hmm. that's a fish that Peter fished during the time of Jesus and it's still very common so and some pastors don't think it's important they want to visit a museum mm -hmm. where you Uh, one of the fishing boats from the time of Jesus, a, a thousand year or two thousand, sorry, mm -hmm. two thousand year old fishing boat that was found in the Sea of Galilee is displayed. Whoa. So you know we can, yes, we can create just the right just environment, just the right environment for the group. Uh, that's so nice. What other the side? Um, what food because th this is uh, something that usually people is a little bit you know uh, uh, they have the details on the food what about the food availability in, in the holy land well it's the best food in the world right <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying that because i grew up on it um actually uh food in israel is is very unique because it's a fusion of many foods mm -hmm. um when the state of israel was created um Jews came back after many years of yes. diaspora uh -huh. from many countries and they brought with them the food. So the food is very international style. Um, on top of that, um, we kind of adopted the Arab food from the countries around us, mm -hmm. which became almost a national food in Israel. So the combination, again, it's a fusion, like the culture itself. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, Israeli breakfast. Mm -hmm. It's considered, was voted by many to be the best in the world in the hotels. It's not just a little piece of egg and maybe a cup of coffee and a croissant. You have a buffet. Mm -hmm. And on the buffet, you usually have about 50, 60 items, if not more, from eggs and cereals to um, fish and vegetables and about 15 different types of cheese and 10 different types of bread. Um, it's it's unbelievable and, and and olives. So you have foods from the Bible, all the way to modern American foods like cereal, oh, wow. and, and it's amazing in one breakfast. <laughs> the, um, uh, you you can uh, cover all the tastes then. <laughs> and everything, everybody finds something to eat there. It's usually it's never a problem. Um, by the way, um, Israeli food is becoming, I understood a trend in the U.S. I was just visiting New York, and mm -hmm. I heard that Israeli-style restaurants serving Israeli food uh -huh. are being voted the best in, in the country, in the United States now. Oh, great. So, yeah, that's uh, uh, obviously uh, Americans love Israeli <laughs> food. <laughs> yes. Uh, another question that I have, uh, what is the other side they can visit in Israel uh, on a pilgrimage? A pilgrimage really is is a, um, a spiritual journey into your faith. That's how I like to say that. Usually, um, we start the pilgrimage um, because of geography. It's a little more difficult to follow the life of Jesus, where first he was born, and then where he preached, and then where he have died and risen. Mm -hmm. uh, so we usually start in in the Tel Aviv area. Um, it's the first night, and people are tired from the flight. Then we move, uh, we visit old Jaffa, mm -hmm. where uh, Peter had the vision about the, the animals, mm -hmm. and also uh, the house of Simon the Tanner. And then we move north, uh, we visit Caesarea, where Peter was imprisoned, and where Pontius Pilate lived. He was a go Roman governor who judged Jesus. He lived actually in Caesarea, and we see the ruins in the palace where he lived, including a 
uh, a stone uh, inscription with his name on it, so he know he was real. Mm-hmm. Then we move up to the north, to the Galilee area, and we have a mixture of biblical uh, Old Testament and New Testament sites. Uh, for example, on Mount Carmel, we have the place where uh, the prophet Elijah fought the false prophets of Baal. Mm-hmm. Then uh, the Sea of Galilee, of course, is the center of the uh, uh, prophecy of Jesus. Uh, we visit Capernaum, where he lived and preached. Uh, we visit uh, Tabha, where he performed the miracle of the fish and loaves of bread. Mm-hmm. The, and the Mount of Beatitudes, that's where he gave the Sermon on the Mountain, uh, with, the 12, with the Beatitudes. Yes. Um, in other words, of course, that the, the city where he grew up, where his parents came from, and mm-hmm. uh, we see the place of the Annunciation, where the Archangel Gabriel announced to Mary, St. Mary, Mary yeah. about the birth of Jesus. And then we move down to the Jordan River, and we can actually baptize in the Jordan in River, the, Jordan. the same waters that Jesus did, the John Bap- where John baptized Jesus. Then um, we arrive at uh, Jerusalem, and that's obviously the holiest place, uh, yeah. because we can walk the Via Dolorosa, the Way of the Sorrows, where Jesus carried the cross through the 14 uh, uh, stations to the Holy Sepulchre, where he was uh, actually buried. And then uh, Bethlehem is just near Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And you go to Bethlehem and you see the place where he was born. And it's very exciting. It's it's very emotional. Uh, I, I'm even getting emotional when I talk about it. Yeah, you know when uh, um, I'm never been there. I, I have to be truth on that. But I ho- always I have that in my heart uh, to go to yeah, uh, Israel and see you know the places that actually our Savior and Christ been there. Uh, how uh, can I find more about the Holy Land pilgrimage? Well, um, it's very easy. Um, we have uh, a website, mm-hmm. uh, faithandheritagetours.com, mm-hmm. where you can find on pilgrimages. We are part of the Israel Expert Group, which is um, uh, specializes in tours to Israel. And also we do extensions to Jordan and to Egypt, which are the neighboring country, which also have Christian sites. And uh, the website there is israelexperts.com. You're more than welcome anytime uh, to go on the website, of course, and there's a lot of information there, but just f- through the website, reach out to us. There is a form there, and we'll be more than happy to provide as many information. There are groups that are organized. Um, we hope that OVM Radio will uh, yeah. organize a group very I soon. I believe we're going to do it. We're working with Elaine on that, so <laughs> yes. uh, it's in the works, and it's, it's going to come very soon. Oh, that's so nice. Tell me, what is the the best time to visit Israel? Um, actually, any time. Israel is, is a good any time. Um, the best weather is um, um, usually uh, the spring and the fall, so April, May, June, and then September, October, and November. The weather is very nice, very mild. Um, it's peak season. Everybody loves to come when the weather is the nicest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like... December, January, February, because it's uh, it's not cold, mm-hmm. it's not hot or warm. Um, it, it's about fifty degrees more or less on more an less. average. Uh-huh. A little rainy, but not bad. Um, and there are some brave souls who come in July and August, where the temperatures go up to ninety degrees, even hundred degrees in the desert. <laughs> uh, but that's also a good time because it has its merits to come when it's hot and really feel the land. How, right. how it is. How it is. What is the agenda for the 2020 for the company? Um, we really, um, right now, we, we uh, organize a lot of uh, pilgrimages. Uh-huh. We work with a number of travel agents, a number of uh, pastors from all over the United States and Europe as well. Uh-huh. And we really hope uh, to work with OVM Radio and to uh, bring as many groups uh, through OVM Radio to Israel. Okay, how many how many people go in the group? How uh, what that, is the and, and the minimum usually for a group is about 15 20. That's a small group. Okay. And some groups want to be small and intimate. It mm-hmm. depends. Uh usually we recommend that the maximum is a bus load which is about 50 55. Over that it's we can do we had bigger groups with two buses, you mm-hmm. know, so the two buses coming together. So it's really up to the organizers. 
how much they really want. Mm-hmm. But the, uh, the minimum is 15 to 20. Usually 15 to 20. We have also small groups, families to call together like 10 people together. I mean, mm-hmm. even two people can come together. The less people you have, the price goes up a little bit. Of course, yeah, sure. Because there's more details. It's more, and exactly. Then the... it's, it's, you know, the same expenses are kind of, yeah. um, have to be paid by less people. Yeah. Uh, uh, c- can you share a message with our audience? Sure. Um, I think the message is that Um, Israelis, people who live in Israel, um, love, love to welcome um, visitors. Uh, we love tourists and uh, we love to share, to show our country and to share our country. And one of the biggest things that we love to do is to share it with pilgrims. Doesn't matter what religion, uh, p- people who believe that this is a holy land and really want to experience the wonderful emotional, spiritual experience that the Holy Land provides. And um, we at, at uh, Faith and Heritage Tours slash Israel Experts would love to, to help anybody come to Israel and, and make them experience this, this unbelievable journey. One of the, the always people is wondering how safe is to be in Israel. Very good question. Um, honestly, Israel is one of the safest places in the world. Um, because of the security history that Israel went through years ago, the security measures that are put in place made Israel so safe. It's... extremely unlikely that you will get hurt. First of all, crime rates are very, very, very low. Mm-hmm. It's one in a million, literally, that you have the chance of getting robbed or mugged in Tel Aviv or in Jerusalem. It's just mm-hmm. not happening. Mm-hmm. And as far as terrorist security, in today's world where you have terrorism everywhere, mm-hmm. uh, Israel really became the safest place because we know how to deal with it. We have... The most experienced, unfortunately, of any place in the world. And by now, terrorism doesn't affect Israel anymore, or, or, or much less than other places in the world. So it's really very safe. Yeah, it's a country to prepare, really. Absolutely. It's the, you have to work very hard in that area, right? Abs- absolutely. And they do. And, and the security in Israel is very tough, but you don't see it mm-hmm. because it's so efficient. You, you don't realize that you go through the security and, and you're still secure. Wow. So it's totally, totally secure, um, very safe to go around alone in the streets at night. Um, no problems ever. Oh, ever. Oh, ever. That's at this point, at least, we, we really, any hope, we hope that it's going to go in, on like in that. In the same time, yeah. <laughs> at the same way. Okay. Uh, can you give us more uh, information on how to contact this uh, company? Sure. Um, um, the best way is uh, to go on, on our website, uh-huh. um, which is israelexperts.com mm-hmm. or uh, faithandheritage.com. Mm-hmm. It's one word. It's faith uh, and a and d heritage.com. Um, and there is a form there that you can fill in and ask whatever information you need to fill. If you want to just send on a regular email, um, it's uh, info, I-N-F-O, at israelexperts.com. Okay. And people in Spanish, they have an Spanish? Absolutely. We, we, if somebody writes us in Spanish, we'll, we'll respond in Spanish. Not a problem. Oh, that's so good. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you, Dan. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. <laughs> and I really want to see all of you in Israel. Of course. That's uh, where we're going to work on it. And wonderful. I think it's uh, OVM. It will be more than a pleasure to make a group to, you know, uh, work with you and, uh, and the company and visit this wonderful and, and beautiful all the time uh, country that is... Uh, I always wonder how it look like and uh, see what is the, the real uh, and see exactly with your eyes Absolutely. with the saver goals. It's very, it. very different and very unique. And we'll be waiting. 
Okay, thank Happily you. waiting for you. <laughs> thank you so much, Dan. Thank you, thank you. Okay. ok, querida audiencia, nosotros queremos darle las gracias porque hemos estado compartiendo con ustedes esto que es eh, siempre impresionante para cada uno de nosotros de poder ver los lugares que nuestro Salvador y Señor estuvo. Y aquí con Dan eh, hemos podido estar conversando. Ven, ven, ven Joseph es eh, el nombre de Dan y está aquí más que a la orden para ustedes y ya saben puede contactar en estas dos páginas web para que ustedes puedan tener más información, muchísimas gracias por toda su atención de verdad que estamos muy agradecidos otra vez por su audiencia y esta es Claudia Muñoz eh, eh, tomando el lugar de Elaine Enríquez hoy pero agradeciéndoles como siempre su audiencia y su tiempo que es tan valioso para nosotros también, espero que hayan disfrutado de de esta eh, entrevista y puedan tener y querer más información de esta compañía. Muchísimas gracias. <música>